Welcome to week two of Cardiac Interventional. I think you will find it beneficial to print out all of the lectures and to print out all of the instructions and to print out all of the images and to uh, get a three ring binder and uh, keep everything in a folder. I think you'll find that beneficial. Um, for week two, we're still talking about the anatomy of the heart. Remember, we can look at the anatomy of the heart in five different aspects. Blood flow through the heart, which that's what we talked about last week. The conduction system of the heart. The layers of the heart wall, coronary arteries, and the pressures of the heart. So this week I want to focus on these two things. Layers of the heart wall and pressures of the heart. So uh, in the lecture, or in the videos rather, um, I demonstrate to you um, and talk about the layers of the heart wall. Also I talk about the pericardium, which is a sac uh, that the heart is located within. Um, so you'll want to watch that video and um, just keep it in mind that the visceral pericardium and the epicardium are the same thing. It's, it's, a, it's a structure that has two, two names to it. Uh, the septum is tissue that separates the right side from the left side of the heart. So the right and left atria are separated by the septum the right and left ventricles are also separated by the septum. I also uh, want to talk about hemodynamics and hemodynamics is simply measuring blood pressure. So uh, we normally think about measuring blood pressure you know with a blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope um, but this type of hemodynamics is measuring blood pressure within the blood vessel and so um, there's a video that kind of talks about that um, First of all, the instrument that measures blood pressure um, is called a manometer. And then uh, you have to understand Pascal's, Pascal's law, which basically means that uh, pressure applied to a liquid at any point is transmitted, transmitted equally in all directions. So that means pressure exerted on the column of fluid at the catheter tip, so at the distal end of the tip, is the same as that at the proximal end of the catheter. So what that means is when pressure is pushing on the tip of the catheter, that can be read at the end of the, at the proximal end of the catheter. So the proximal end, the end closest to us, is then connect, connected to a transducer. And then the transducer is, is the device that converts that signal or that pressure into an electronic signal. And then the electronic signal is then converted into a waveform. Now this week we are not going to talk about waveforms just yet. Okay, waveforms are a whole nother beast that we will tackle soon, uh, but not this week. What I want to talk about is uh, the actual pressures within the chambers of the heart. And this table is from your book, page 169. And when you first look at this table, it's kind of overwhelming. It has a lot of uh, abbreviations and it has a lot of ranges and and different things. Um, also it talks about the waves and again <clears throat> we're not going to talk about the waveforms to, uh, this week so you can just disregard here where it says you know the A wave and V wave. Um, this diagram here is a simplified version of the chart okay it's just it's the same information it's just a simplified version so here it says the right atrium the mean is 0 to 8 well I simplify that and just say the right atrium the mean is a 5 and so knowing, it's easier for me to memorize one number and then just know that you, you know, give, it, give or take a few. So for me, instead of saying the mean is 0 to 8, the mean or average of the right atrium pressure is 5. Um, also, I did want to remind you uh, that uh, blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury. Um, okay. I do like that this chart goes in order <clears throat> of blood flow through the heart. So from the right atrium is the right ventricle. So the right ventricle, um, I have it set up here. Systole is 20, diastole is 0, and the EDP, the end diastolic pressure, <clears throat> is 5. So again, even if you don't know what the EDP is right now, you just need to memorize these numbers, 20, 0, 5. Then the chart goes on to the uh, pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery, the blood pressure is 25 over 10. So that's just your uh, 
systole over diastole, 25 over 10. Then of course the blood goes out to the lungs, then it comes back to the heart, dumps into the left atrium. The left atrium mean is 10, the left ventricle systole is 120, diastole is 0, and the EDP, the end diastolic pressure, is 10. And then uh, the normal pressure of the aorta, or any artery for that matter, is 120 over 80. So 120 being systole, 80 being the diastole. So again, this week not covering a whole lot of information, however, uh, the information we are covering is kind of a lot, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot to learn about the heart. There's a lot to learn about the anatomy before we can even get into the complex stuff. So this isn't even the hard stuff, but this is the stuff that you have, it's, it's crucial that you understand all of this information before we move on. Um, so again, and you'll hear me say this several times, the best way I have found to learn these things is to just get out a blank piece of paper and write out the steps of the blood flow through the heart. And in this case, get out a blank diagram of the heart and fill in the pressures of the heart for each chamber. And you just have to do this over and over again until it somehow sticks. That's the best advice I have for you on that. Um, but that is week two.